Okay, guys, let's jump into chapter eight. The first part of chapter eight is where they do that warm up, that show what you know. Uh, basically, they just want to look at multiplication a couple different ways. First of all, when we look at, at this model here, we've got 16 dots. And they show it to us as, as uh, two ways. We can kind of add up the groups, four plus four plus four plus four equals 16, right? Or we can look at it like a multiplication problem instead of an addition problem. Four groups, or excuse me, groups of four, four times is 16. Four times four is 16. Let's look at another problem, same, same concept. Here we've got little groups of two, two plus two plus two equals six, right? Or we can look at it, a group of two, three times. Two times three equals six, okay? So we can either kind of add up the individual units or multiply the, the, the groups, um, you know, times however many of those groups there are. Okay, this is gonna help us as we move through chapter eight. Um, this is a little bit of review. We've got shaded out of, out of the possible, uh, possible parts, one and one fourth are shaded, right? Another way that you could write that would be five fourths, right? Uh, how many are unshaded? Three out of four are unshaded, okay? Um, th these are uh, the questions that you're gonna find in that show what you know section. So if any of that was confusing, here are the problems and the answers, but make sure you're kind of going through them with me. All right, in this one you've got, uh, gosh, what's a five-sided? We said was, uh, what's five-sided? No, six-sided hexagon. And um, these hexagons and uh, divided into two parts. And let's see here, five of six total parts are filled in, uh, but really we're looking at two and a half, right? Two and a half total or written as a, instead of a mixed number, an improper fraction, that would be five over two. Two and a half, five over two, okay? Some terms that are gonna be useful in chapter eight. Fraction, you know what a fraction is. It's just a part of a whole. Here's two fourths, right? It's a fraction, one half, three fourths, uh, six eighths, all fractions, right? Parts of a whole. A multiple. Multiples are, are, are uh, remember multiples will go up to, to infinity. Basically, when you take a number and look at what are the multiples of it, you'll always use counters. And the counters in this case, one times 10 is 10. 10 times two, 20. Uh, 10 times three, 30. 10 times four, 40. 10 times five, 50, 60, 70, 80, so on and so forth to infinity. And just take note that we used a little counter in there because we're looking at multiples of 10. 10 times one, one's our counter. 10 times two, two was our counter. But ultimately, what our focus here is multiples. Multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, right? Uh, let's look, unit fractions. We remember what those are, right? Fractions where the numerator is one. One fourth, one tenth, one sixteenth. When your numerator is one, that is a unit fraction. Next important term, a product. A product. Uh, product is the answer to a multiplication uh, question, right? So the product of two times five is 10. And then lastly, the identity property. Identity property is just basically any number times one is itself. Five times one is five. Six times one is six. Seven times one is seven. Any number times one, the answer is itself, right? Seven times one is seven. All right, now let's look to 8.1. Uh, the first thing that they do in 8.1 is they're, they're introducing you to multiplying fractions, okay? Um, but the way that they kind of are first introducing it, similar to the way we saw these models up here, 16, you can look at 16 as four times four, or you can look at it as four groups, four plus four plus four plus four. Okay, so they're asking you to do the same thing, only with fractions. Five sixths, what are the unit fractions that would make up five sixths? It's easy, right? One fifth, or excuse me, one sixth, plus one sixth, plus one sixth, plus one sixth, plus one sixth. Those are five one six, right? One six added up five times is gonna be five six. Now a simpler way or another way to, to write that would be one six five times. Five times one six is five six. Now, of, of course, uh, and we'll get to this, is that you know you can look at this like five times one is five, that'll be your in your numerator, and then it would be five over one because it's five, right? One times six would be six for five, six. Uh, that's kind of the more traditional, normal way of looking at it. We will get to that. 
um, that'll make it easy. Uh, but right now the book take you know kind of does its own steps, and they want you to look at how the unit fractions help us understand this. So unit fractions to make up three over two. Well, let's what goes into three over two? One over two plus one over two plus one over two. Right, that would be three over two, right? One, one half plus one half plus one half equals three over two. But because um, we did one half three times, we could simply write it as three times one half. And we get three over two. Okay, let's keep getting a little bit of practice at this. I don't have any more on the board, but um, your book will offer plenty of practice at this. If you, if you get stuck, send me the question that you're stuck on and I'll, and I'll help walk you through it. Okay, um, the other thing that the book is gonna ask you to do is, is to, um, to identify multiples. And we know like multiples of two, that's easy, right? Multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, 10, we keep going, right? We use the counters, two times one, two, two times two, four, I'm pointing at the counters, right? Two times three, six, Next one, two times four is eight, but the multiples are the two, four, six, eight. Well, what if I asked you for multiples of a fraction? That'd be really easy actually, right? You know, we, we'd start one fourth times one would be one fourth, but let's jump to two, one fourth times two, two fourths. One fourth times three, three fourths. One fourth times four, four fourths. One fourth times five, five fourths. Okay, and where are we? Let's see here. Okay. Um, let's see, just a little review of, of other things that, you know, kind of, of, of what we've been talking about. Uh, three fourths, we can look at that two ways, right? One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals three fourths, right? Add up all those unit fractions. Or one fourth three times, one fourth times three is three fourths. See how those two, I'll back out here, are the same thing. Let's look at one more. We do uh, four fifths. Um, we'll skip that, you know, we could do one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth equals four fifths, but we can just kind of simply write it as four times one fifth equals four fifths. Same thing with three tenths. Three, one tenth, three times. Three times one tenth is three tenths, okay? So if you guys have any questions with this, um, you know, shoot me an email or a message, text, whatever. All lines of communication are open. Uh, tell me which number you're struggling with and I'll help walk you through it. Um, but that's the gist of it. Don't overthink it. Just think about it. Let's just look at this one last time. Just think about five, six. You can add up the unit fractions. One, six, one, six, one, six. 1 6 and 1 6 equals 5 6, or you can just do 5 times 1 6. That's the gist of chapter 8.1, so keep it simple.